All right. We want to uh, first pop of the day. Here we go. Ooh, that was a good one. Good pop. Mm, good pop. Good hotel pop. hotel rendezvous from Revelry Brewery. A little Bavarian wheat. It's probably my favorite of the staple cans. That was that wouldn't be my selection if you sound the sounded the the dinger and yeah. had to pick a beer. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't be hotel rendezvous. Sounded the dinger. All right. Well, to lead off the second round. With 2-1, we got Sandusky Niners on the clock here. He's You selected Josh Jacobs first. Of course. And uh, who are you going to lead off 2-1 with? Well, I got to stop. second. I got to stop the slide here at 2-1. The BPA, I, I believe, is A.J. Brown. Yeah. Well, he wouldn't have been available if you didn't take uh, <laughs> Hakeem Butler. Already taking shit for it. People really didn't like the Hakeem uh, Butler. You knew that was coming. I, I knew it You're was so coming. so dumb. I did debate with myself on A.J. Brown and Hakeem Butler at the, at the time. And then there were two more picks that went off the board, and they weren't A.J. Brown. So I'm not the only one that passed on A.J. Yeah. Brown. Pretty pretty self-explanatory pick here. I mean, I, yeah, we, I we mean, talked about him at the end of it. and We've got a, we've got a rookie breakdown also out there, and then there's an article on the FFDynasty.com by, uh, I think it's the M, the M. Bauer. Yeah. Let me click this link. A.J. Brown, the real deal. Uh, he kind of tries to hate on DK Metcalf, which I don't like, but it's okay. You can have your own opinion. Uh, yeah, the M Bauer eighty five. Uh, so go M Bauer right on the Twitters. Go check that out. Uh, there's there's a lot to like about AJ Brown, and also some things not to like. He had some very productive seasons at Ole Miss. Uh, led the SEC in in touchdowns and receiving yards in seventeen. Upped his receptions and yards in eighteen. Less touchdowns, but overall very respectable numbers. But the college dominator and breakout age are only in the 59th percentile, so I'm not sure he can be good. Yeah, how could you? Uh, tons of catches, but 14 drops, ranked 62nd in drop rate. A, a typical thing for a lot of these lot receivers of these. coming out. Yep. Uh, but a really big physical guy. He's pretty smooth. 7.6 yards after catch it's per completion. Big slot. Right? And that's the thing, right? Is is I, I pin him as a, as a slot receiver. But he only had 59 of his 85 catches from the slot in 18, so he's definitely playing outside some. I didn't see a ton of it on the tape that is available to watch, but he, he obviously was. Like The big question is, can he win on the outside yeah. in the NFL? Because, I mean, they just paid slot man extraordinaire Adam Humphreys <laughs> $19 million guaranteed to right. play the slot. That's not a cheap, That's not a small number. It's not like uh, we can just bench this guy kind of number to, mm -hmm. to put this guy in. So I, I would imagine they plan on him – playing yeah. some outside and this is why aj brown is still available at 2-1 and, and a good pick and we said right you know it's dynasty and things will change they don't have a quarterback signed through 2020 i don't think on the roster and you know adam humphreys will still be around but you know we, we could get a little humphreys outside aj brown inside kind of being able to switch places with each other a little bit i worry about aj brown outside i didn't love him playing outside i didn't think he was great at uh at getting open out there but right it's not the worst he's got the size and 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 he's got some good moves but definitely i think he definitely is better in the slot i think i like him off the line of scrimmage i like his play speed I, I like his footwork he's good along the sideline he's got the toe drag working he's pretty savvy versus his zone Get, he floats to the open spot i just he's not like a master separator and he doesn't have he did run a 449 but i I don't think he was that fast on the field. Like I don't, I don't think he's like the big play waiting to happen, which is my opinion. Hakeem Butler is, and that's kind of one of the deciding factors that that made me take Hakeem over this guy. But among other things, but I mean, at two one, what can you do? Like this, this guy's yeah. got a pretty good team. He's got carry on. He's got Christian McCaffrey. He's got Joe Mixon. He's got T Y. Um, and so let's see who Robbie Anderson. Am I missing some good guy? He's got here? Amari, Cortland, Amari Cooper. So you throw a really good guy onto his team. We, you know, we, in this league that we're drafting for, we took our home league and chopped it up and split up the teams, and we're picking for everybody. The guy who has the first overall pick won the right to get first overall by winning the losers bowl. So he has a better team than right. a typical picking first squad does. Right, right. And so you can take A.J. Brown and throw him on here and put him on the practice squad and just wait it out and see if either yeah. Mariota fulfills his potential or they move on from him and get somebody else. It's yeah. dynasty, so you got some time. Yeah, for sure. And he's got he's got a little bit of time to bide with his receivers. He does have like a Larry Fitz in there who could give him some starts. He's got Pettis down there on the IR or the taxi squad. He could have used the tight end probably the most on this draft, but, the, you know, 
probably not going to reach up for Irv or Jace here necessarily. Um, but I think A.J. Brown is, is a no-brainer right here. Agreed.